In this lesson, we'll take a look at solving inequalities using technology. The specific technology we'll take a look at is using the Texas Instruments TI-83 Plus graphing calculator. And there's a question in the top part of this page referring to the graph over here, and the question asks, where is the function positive and where is it negative? Now, positive and negative refers to the function values or y values. Where are they positive and where are they negative? And the answer refers to an interval for x. When, when is x or where is x if x if y is positive? Uh, what values does x have when y is negative? And on the graph, if we look here, and I'm tracing up here in green, this is an example of a place where all the points have positive y-coordinates. Now the answer to that part of the graph is the intervals for x are to the left of that point. Now at that point y is, has a value of 0. It's neither positive nor negative. But immediately as soon as we're above it, y is positive. And so the interval upon which x is or exists here, that y is positive, is to the left of that negative 4 point. And so we would say the interval where x is less than negative 4, anywhere along here, we have points where the y-coordinates are positive. Now there's another place over here to the right of the graph. This is another place where the y-values are all positive. And so the interval, interval for x is to the right of that point. Again, that point's not included. The open circle means you don't include the point. And the interval for x is x is greater than 1. So where x is greater than 1, any value of x bigger than 1, we have points that are up here and their y-values are positive. So to answer the question, where is the function positive? The function is positive or has positive function values or positive y-values on the intervals where x is less than negative 4 and where x is greater than 1. Now, where is it negative? Down here, and you see it tracing in red now, those are all the places on the graph where the y-values are negative. Again, we don't include that point. We don't include that point just between those two points. So between those two points, which would be this interval, notice the open circles. So just between negative 4 and positive 1. And so we would say where x is greater than negative 4 and less than 1, the y-values are negative. And so the answer, where is the function negative? The function is negative on the interval between negative 4 and 1. And now this is, you can read this literally as negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 1. Or this, uh, the, the way this is commonly read is x is between negative 4 and 1. Notice we just have inequalities. There's no equal signs in any of these because we're talking about where is the function positive or negative. It's actually equal to 0 at negative 4 and at positive 1. But you do not include any of those, either of those two points in any of these intervals because the function has a value of 0. It's not negative or it's not positive there. Flipping over to the example on the second page, on what intervals, again, is this function positive or negative? And first of all, we'll deal with positive. And so uh, you notice I just traced along there. Those are places where the y values are positive. And so the interval is between negative 5 and negative 1. And so we would write the interval x is greater than negative 5 and less than negative 1, between negative 5 and negative 1. Another place where the function has positive y values is to the uh, right of this point, or to the right of 1. So the interval there would be x is greater than 1. So when x is between negative 5 and negative 1, and also greater than 1, the function is positive. So the function is positive on the intervals negative 5 to negative 1, and greater than positive 1. Now the function is negative on two different intervals. Here's 1 here. And notice the arrow means it keeps on going. And that interval would be everywhere to the left of negative 5. And so for x, we would write x is less than negative 5. And then this is another place where the y values are negative. And so the x coordinates for that are between negative 1 and positive 1. So that's where the function is negative and over here. And so to answer where is it negative, the function is negative on. And the two intervals are where x is less than negative 5. That's this part of the graph. And between negative 1 and positive 1, that's that part of the graph. So you're always answering where is it negative or positive, an interval for x, under which the function is either above the x-axis or below the x-axis if you're talking where it's negative. If you flip over to the example on uh, this page, we're asked, where is this cubic polynomial greater than 0? 
And I've graphed the function over here. Now you need to find very specifically where this x coordinate would be because where is it greater than zero would be this part right here and also this part right here. So the answers are that interval right there between about two and about five and then to the left of approximately negative one. Now we can find those numbers very specifically and that's what's over here using a specific function on the calculator. It's actually a zero function. So I'm going to stop the PowerPoint for a moment and we'll open our graphing calculator. And I've already typed in the uh, cubic polynomial here. And so that's what it looks like. That's the same graph as was on the PowerPoint. Now I want to find specifically how to find these points. And you go into the Calculate menu. So I'm going to go second and the Trace button, which is Calculate there. And I want function number two. I want to find the zeros. Where, where does that function have uh, uh, x, x is so that the y is zero. And so notice in the bottom of the graph it's saying the word left bound here now. So what I want to do is I want to trace to a point and let's say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find this very first zero right here to the left of that point. So I hit enter and then I'll, it's asking for a right bound. Notice the words right bound here. So we'll go a little bit past that point and I hit enter. Now, so it's searching actually on that interval between those two points. It's going to find for me that zero and it doesn't matter what you guess. It asks for a guess but you can put anything you want. And if I hit enter again, so it's telling me that there's a zero at negative 1.05 and that's where y is zero. If I want to find this one here, I'll go second calculate again and select function number two. And so we're going to scroll over to a point a little bit to the left of that point and maybe we'll stop about right there and hit enter and then we'll go a little bit past it and we'll hit enter again and again and so it's telling me that that point that zero is about 2.11 and so that's how you can use the graphing calculator to find zeros very specifically so where is the function positive it's positive to the uh, left of this of this point and so my solution I would say so the solution for that part is x is less than negative 1.05. Now the other part is between these two points right here, which are about 2.11 and 4.94. That's what the bottom screen capture tells us. So the other part of the solution is that x is between about 2.11 and 4.94. Flipping over to the last page, one last inequality that we'll solve using technology or ask for this, where is this quartic less than or equal to zero? Notice it includes equal to. So what that changes will include those points where the, uh, where the y coordinate actually is zero. And so on the graph here, this is one place where y is less than zero. And then here's another place over here that y is less than zero for our quartic. And so I have the four screen captures here. So this point right here is about negative 1.1. And this point right here is about 1.27. So for our solution, we would write x is between negative 1.1 and 1.27, or, and for this part here, the two bottom screen captures here show it's about between 3.73 and 6.1. Notice I have equalities on these inequality signs because it says less than or equal to zero, so we include the points where actually y is zero.